Welcome to the After the Show Movie Podcast, brought to you by your hosts, Ace Scully and Sid Top. We're addicted to movies. Are you? Happy Halloween, Sid Talk. Is it Halloween yet? It is not. Well, <laughs> it's close, right? The end. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. That was not the before the after the dish. dish, 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 dish. Da, 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 da. Put your teeth in. <laughs> Let me get a drink of tea. I'll, I'll wash away the, the fumbling. All right. We'll wait. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Tea has been consumed. That was not the before the after the show discussion. Discussion? Discussion. Sorry. I don't like mispronouncing letters. Gives me a headache. Uh, before the after the show was you doing audio, us discussing the alien world. Uh-huh. I mean, the alien world as in the franchise of this movie. You made tea, and I'm playing City Skylines, and that's it. Thank you all for coming. The end. <laughs> Let's start this thing off. It's not Halloween, but I'll put you in the Halloween mood with a horror movie. Sci-fi horror? Is yeah. it? I don't know about that. All right, it's Saturday, October the 19th. This is after the show 861. We're a weekly movie review podcast, and this week we're looking at the movie Alien Romulus. It's a 2024 release. It's out now on streaming, rated R. It's one hour and 59 minutes long, and it's from our friends at Fox and Disney, who sent us the digital code for review Sid Talk. Can you give us the synopsis of the movie, Alien Romulus? There's a ship that has a creature on it that's not very nice. Uh, sorry, a spaceship. <laughs> right. It's not like Titanic, no. And we can't say it's an origin story necessarily of the alien. It's just a story of how the alien, how humans assist with spreading the xenomorph around the galaxy. Aye. Or galaxy. I don't know what fucking, sorry. I don't know what solar system we're in in this movie. I it's don't a know. Different, the planets all have different names. So I don't know how far humans have gone at this point. But Yeah. We got in the TV show that's coming up next year. We're going to Earth. So okay. we are in our... I guess we're in our solar system. Well, the ones in this, they are not. No, they're not, are they? Because the planet looks weird, yeah. Well, the names are all... We, we know the planets in our solar system. Correct. But see, we're, we're not really talking all about right. the movie when we're talking about space science. Here's the one off the box, the uh, synopsis. While scavenging the deep ends of a derelict space station, a group of young space colonists come face to face with the most terrifying life form in the universe. Well, we don't know about the universe. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's bit still, of a bit hyperbolic. It is pretty terrifying, though. Yeah, but you can shoot it, you can freeze it, you can kill it. I mean, it's not like immortal or anything. All right. Alien Romulus, the latest film in the Alien franchise, takes place 20 years after Alien. So that's where it is in the timeline. Okay. Thank you. I always need that. Yeah. So, Sito, what did you think? And you're a big Alien fan, aren't you? I'm a big Alien fan. Um, I even like Alien versus Predator. Don't you want you want to fight about it? We can, but I knew there had to be somebody. <laughs> I'm it. I'm the <laughs> one person. I didn't say I love it. I don't mind it. I enjoyed it. I like the world of the xenomorph and the the future of humans and the concept that there's an evil corporation, of course, in charge of everything. Yeah, evil, subjective, of course. But then I have my like, ugh, you know, what's that? Ye Ugh, like squinty and turn my nose up a little bit and like overall the story is a bit blah right i mean it's pretty generic as a story goes. yeah so here's the yeah. story a group of people who want to get off of a colony so wayland corporation has colonies different places like i said in some other solar system and humans are dying of lots of diseases it's squalor there's no sunshine at all because the opening says there's zero sunshine at this place where this right. young woman lives mining planet she's got a boyfriend he's got cousin and a sister and everyone's parents are dead because they've all died in the mining there's horrible diseases it's just failing but it's making money for the wayland corporation mm -hmm. this group of ragtag People want to get on a little ship, go up to what they think is going to be a bigger ship, get in some cryo chambers and shoot themselves off to a system that apparently is, of course, 
you know, a better place. There's always a better place in these space scenarios, right? Yeah. So they end up on a space station where we've seen in the beginning of the movie, someone goes and gets a little pod from the alien machine, the, what's it called? The Nostromos. Uh-huh. The, the alien machine. The ship that <laughs> Ripley survived. Correct. Yeah. It's all exploded, but there's a, a pod with an alien xenomorph in it. They've retrieved it, and then the space station is sort of abandoned, and we know why. We know why before we even get there, yeah. because inside there are going to be dead people and caves of aliens. I mean, it's a good setup for an alien movie. It is, but it's the same thing over and over. It's like, here's an abandoned thing, and we're going to discover these little creatures, and they're going to wreak havoc. I mean, I want something a little bit different. Let's, yeah, yeah I'd like to go a thousand years in the future, but I. I'm not writing them, so. Yeah. And, and not- then, of course, we get on with, like, people are dying, and the alien shows itself in its reproductive path. So you have to realize the, if you don't know anything about alien world, the xenomorph lays eggs. Out of those eggs come what are called, we call, the we humans call them face huggers. The face hugger gets on your face. It sticks a thing down your throat. It lays an egg inside of you. You are now the incubator for its young. Those young come out. As the mother is xenomorph, right? And then that just keeps going on and on and on. They're hard to kill. Yeah. They don't mind it if they're in the vacuum of space with no air, no temperature, no nothing. They're they're fine. They're they are, as they keep referring to them in this these movies, the perfect organism. Yeah. What are they? I mean, you can kill them. They don't just like <laughs> grow new organs. Oh boy, I haven't seen like zombie xenomorph. Oh. I just made up a new movie. <laughs> it's one of those that's on um, Scream what TV. It? Scream TV. <laughs> what would it be called? Alien Zombius. Zombius instead of Romulus. No. Zombulus. No, we have to combine Xenomorph and Zombie. Xenomorph. How about Zombie? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Zombie Morph. There we go, everybody. There's your. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, yeah, that's what this boils down to. People go to a ship, investigate a ship, all hell breaks loose. Like the other movies. You're right. Yep. It's always the same, which is unfortunate. But the one I mean, with the Frenchman in the wheelchair kind of yep. reminded me like of that one a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that was isolated into like a very small space. Well, I guess the first movie was. They all are. That's yeah. part, of the, part of the mythos. Um, Aliens is the one that breaks out a little bit, isn't it? There's yes. a bigger space to play in. But again, it's an abandoned colony where yeah. they have to go check it out and see what's happened to all the humans. And then, bada boom, bada bing, we found the xenomorph. Yeah. So I liked this movie quite a bit. Good. But there were parts I didn't like. I'll go into the parts I didn't like first. All right. I didn't like the accents of some of the characters. <laughs> they didn't make sense. There was one guy who was literally like a... Inner London thug youth. He lives in a different solar system or something. Why did he sound like he was about to mug somebody in inner <laughs> London? It's like, yo, bro, you know, <laughs> bro, there's an alien over there, bro. You're kind of right. Where would, if we're going, <laughs> if we're going like, you know, some big decades into our future and people have been put on these colonies on different planets and solar systems and different solar systems. How do accents survive? (laughs) It makes no sense, does it? Especially not that kind of accent. So, like, yeah, in the original Alien, we had American people, British people, but nobody with such a... Like, I'm thinking that the accent that this dude had was impossible for anybody to understand who's not from London. Oh, I found it very difficult, yes. Yeah. And I've been married to you for 25 years, and you're I mean, not London. I don't speak but, like that, but... No, but we watched a lot of British TV and movies, and I was like, oh, God, I can't get what this guy's saying half the time. I and almost, he was a jerk. And, and I am British, and I had probably had a better time understanding him, but only barely. And then I'm like, please let that guy die so I don't have to try and decipher <laughs> what he's saying anymore. Because he's like, yo, 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 yo. Well, like your, your wish was granted. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I knew he was going to, clearly. You know, people of are course. going to that. He was also the most annoying person right off off front. It was almost like mixing one of those old, uh, well, not just old ones, but a horror movie where all the horrible teenagers in the beginning 
bite the dust. It was exactly that, wasn't it? Because there were disposable. young people in this movie. He didn't. They didn't even give him a chance to like show any heart or like. He was okay. just a dickhead. He that was, was what he was, right? Yes. So if we have somebody who's a complete dickhead, you're gonna you can't understand him anyway, and you hate him <laughs> because he's a dickhead. <laughs> Let him go. Clearly, he's gonna die. Also, like I think that's what made this movie different. It was a very young cast, right? There was no like elder, like who you know was in charge of them. No, it was just true. a bunch of youngsters, like twenty year olds, which that's different than other alien movies because they're not all experts in any field or anything. True, but they sure as hell know how to run everything. They know everything about these ships. They know how to do the weapons. They know how to find all the stuff, which I find fascinating. He said something about game. Oh, it's he learned how to run weapons from, from using a video game. Yeah, so there's video games in the future on the colony. Well, did you notice when at, right at the very beginning where she first meets him and walks up to him, he's playing on a video game console. Yes, and I was like, holy shit, the alien universe has a switch or whatever that is that he's playing. And then did you see the game they were playing on the ship? It was like from 1985. Exactly, which would be what the heck. Um, no wonder the colonists want to revolt. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what is this old shit that we Yeah, really? Retro. We heard about the 20th century. Come on. <laughs> now, what I read was Fede Alvarez, who directed this. He's really into video games, and he was particularly into the alien video game that I liked, Isolation. So mm. that, I think he just wanted to throw some video games into the alien universe. They're not trained. They're not elite soldiers. They're not anything, are they, these people? They're just, they can do some stuff. Why yeah. can they do some stuff? Because they're like, at the beginning, I was getting the idea that they were like a little ragtag kind of like uh, thieves or something, or they like... Oh, I don't think so. They just have to work in the mines and they want to leave. That's it. That's the right. whole story. There's nothing else interesting about them at all. <laughs> yeah, I wish there was a little bit more development of them. We don't if establish like the one lady as like a master hacker, but that's kind of what she's doing and she knows how to pilot any ship, And but we don't say that. No. You know what I mean? We're just, you just kind of plug that in as you're watching. So, yeah, like you said, a teen slasher movie, it can kind of go down like that. Kind of. And the slasher is the alien, not the Oh, the alien doesn't have a ton of kills in this movie. The the facehuggers get a couple of shots in, don't they? Yeah, I mean, everyone on the space station is dead, though. Yeah, they've that, already, oh, that's true. Yeah, they've already done them in. <laughs> yeah, we missed that part. That's going to be a Marvel comic, apparently. Right. That part. Um, but I, I'll tell you. Yeah, sure, why not sell us some more shit? What's going to happen in that Marvel comic is the aliens, they're, they're experimenting, and then they kill them all. That's it. You mean the aliens are going to kill everybody? Yes. Yes, we They're know. They're experimenting on them. We already know the end of the story. <laughs> Why are we writing a comic book of it? But hey. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Money, money, money. Money, money, money. So I really liked it. It had the atmosphere of Alien. I really liked the set, whatever they built for the... Yes. It's, all, it's a proper practical space station that they've built. Yep, and I love the grunge of the world in the future at the mining colony. It's horrible and disgusting and dirty and people are filthy. And, and like it doesn't look out, if you've just watched Alien, it doesn't look out of place because the design is the same. Correct. It's, it's mucky. No, it's not all perfect. Like you see a lot of space movies where everything's like pristine and white and glowing. And it's not that. It's dirty and horrible. I don't know about that. Does it, in space, would things get dirty? I think if a corporation that just wants to make money and thinks humans are disposable, they're not going to care about the hygiene right, or the air quality. So I think that's how it goes. This movie has some good kill scenes. It's nothing that I didn't expect, though. That's the problem. True. I knew from the poster that a facehugger is going to jump on somebody. You know, the Definitely. poster ruins that part. It's clear, I mean, you're watching an alien movie, that aliens are going to do what aliens do, i.e. acid blood, biting them, ripping them apart. Uh, oh, one thing that was new in this movie, I think that was kind of cool, was that like um, where it, it made like a ball on the wall, like a weird, it, it was its Oh little, my. And that guy tried to like uh, zap it with a um, taser. Yeah. And then it kind of... It started, like, literally, like, intentionally spitting acid at him. Yeah. Little, but it, it was, was like also, somebody gobbing at somebody, like. It was very vaginal. Yeah. So that was something <laughs> new. Say, I was putting that out there. <laughs> I liked the scene. There was a scene with an elevator that I thought was quite cool. And the spectacle of 
I won't spoil the whole thing, but there's a spaceship incident at the end. And it's done in, like, cool CG, you know, like huge. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. I'll call it the Sander. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. It looks amazing. I wanted yes. more of that. I like that concept a lot. Yeah. So it delivers what alien, what you would expect from an alien movie. I just don't think it pushes anything or makes makes you understand anything a bit better. Mm. Do you? Like, the story isn't... No. N- Like, the lore or the story is not messed with hardly, apart from what do we now know? What does this confirm that we didn't know? Anything? Um, No, it's just, like I said, (laughs) when we were, we watched it, I'm like, well, it's just sort of filling in the gap between where Ripley is on the Nostromos, and then later she's on, you know, she's in Aliens, and now basically humans have caused the spread of the Xenomorph. Right. Because of our own technology and that it, this is just another step in that prog- process. That's all I could think that we're establishing here. What I was reading from the director is it was going to be a standalone movie in the alien universe, not connected to the timeline. While he was working on it, he realized that he could fit it into the timeline and it not ruin ev- everything. So what do you think of that? Would you rather have it? disconnected or connected? oh no no it's fine as long as you're adding i mean as long as you're not changing what's been established right we all find that to be very annoying you know yeah you like, can't make come it, in with something brand don't new don't make it all of a sudden like the xenomorph can like talk and have yeah. a conversation like i can handle that the xenomorph is smart enough to stalk you and hunt you because it's a creature in the universe right and we know nothing else about it other than its reproductive system we also know if you think back to original Alien, it will attack anybody and Predator versus Alien. It's not just a it's not just like hunting humans or anything. It's not just like a bug in the universe. It's an intelligent Yeah. It knows how to make itself reproduce and keep going, like a virus or a bacteria or something, right? It just so I'm I have no problem with when they say, Oh, it'll be deterred by looking at the weapon. Well, that's okay. I can accept that because that's not something we've thought about or talked about before is that it's looking at the human and seeing that it has a weapon in its hand. And then fa- then going, hmm, I better not come right. out. Right. It. It's a learning creature. It grows really fast. We know this. That's established. It grows. It develops quickly. It's intelligent. I think we what we need is the next phase. We need to see maybe these are all just like minions of the xenomorph that somewhere they have their own solar system where or galaxy or planet or whatever and there is a more higher evolved version of them but that's in my mind that's not a that's not a movie thing no (laughs) Uh, if they're listening it might be you never know (laughs) all right let's move on to the cast kaylee spaney plays rain she's the girl from civil war that we watched earlier this year Mm -hmm. Uh, i think she was an excellent heroine for this Yes, very good I almost always during the movie, I'm like, what they're going to say at the end of this movie is that that's Ripley's daughter. Oh, right. Because she's 20 years old and Ripley's just done it. I was like, oh, Ripley's probably, that's probably Ripley's daughter. But luckily they didn't do that because I think that would have been cheap and shitty, right? I mean, I wouldn't mind, but yeah, I wouldn't even think about it, actually. And Ripley already has a daughter. If you're into the alien thing and you haven't played the game Alien Isolation which is a cool first-person alien game that actually deals with Ripley's daughter, and it's canon, like Ridley Scott, you know... Approves. Blessed it with his okay. hands, yeah. <laughs> so if you want to know the story of Ripley's daughter, you can go and play that game. It's a lot. It's a very, very good game. It's quite old now, but it's still a good one. Uh, David Johnson is Andy. I think Andy is the standout actor for this whole thing. Very good, yes. He's a synthetic which means? In the alien universe, he's, he's an android. android yeah. yeah. But he gets to play as an actor. They insert chip a different chip into his head at one point. So he's Correct. a different AI kind of thing. And it really comes across that he's a different person. Absolutely. Diff- he does a good job of that. And he does a good job of being... See, it's sweet, actually. Rain put, like, dad into a, into a synth. No, mm. she didn't. Her dad, before no, he died. No, she didn't. Her no, dad her, did. Yeah, her dad, before he died, whenever yeah. that was, um, 
reprogrammed, re found this Android in the trash, reworked it, reprogrammed it and made it so that its prime directive was to protect his daughter, who is our main lead character. Basically lady. be dad. He, brother. It's like her brother. Yeah. And tell, yeah. tell dad jokes and just make her like feel <laughs> at home kind of thing. Correct. But then when he switches out, when they switch out his chip, he's a different person. He's, um, he works for Wayland Corporation. And it's all about <laughs> protecting the company and whoever gets, you know, if there are any casualties, that's fine too, so long as the company's good. Correct. Because right. the calculation is we yeah. must do what's best for the company. So I thought he was standout. I would like to see him in something else. I really liked him. I'd never seen him before. No, he's really good. Aileen Wu plays Navarro. She's the pilot lady. I mean, she was fine, but they didn't give her much, you know? She you know, was... um, the Last of Us 2 video game that we played. Mm -hmm. You know the lady you meet called Liv towards the end with the bald head? Mm, she's no. like She's like one of the... Oh, yeah. She's going to be her in Last of Us 2, oh, this right. actress. And she, I thought she was excellent in this, and I loved that piece of technology, the x-ray machine. Yeah, but I mean, there wasn't much to her. There wasn't much to her, no. She didn't get a lot of chance to be much. And Isabella Merced plays Kay. She's the pregnant lady. Also, didn't get much of a chance to She get did to get know. to do an awesome scream. She did. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was blood-curdling, one of those ones, where you're like, oh, oh. Ouch. <laughs> Directed by Fede Alvarez, he directed Evil Dead 2013 and Don't Breathe, if you remember that one. He is the master of uh, claustrophobic horror, let's say. Mm. So he was a good choice for this. What do you think of his directing? I feel like it's pretty, I'm not going to say generic, but that's what I mean. It's just very straightforward, right? There's nothing... No, but it looks Interesting. the part, this movie. Right, the looks is uh, set direction, art direction, and design. Yeah. The directing of the people and of the the vibe and everything, it's very functional. It's kind of what I expect from an alien movie. I don't, it's, it's kind of what it is, right? Kind of. When we think about aliens, you yep. have a very different, it's a action-packed, and it's got specific Cameron vibes. That's the only one that kind of sticks out as something different. All the rest kind of seem... I mean, three is very specific, so we know that one. Claustrophobic place. Three, is it? Prison, yeah. I mean, they're at a prison yeah. camp or what? prison planet Just a or prison, whatever it is. basically, yeah. But it's yeah. very different. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's, it's got a very specific um, attitude and personality, Four has kind of a specific personality, but this one, it's like you'd read the description before we started that the guy who did this one wanted to incorporate all the movies. And I feel like he did that, which kind of also erases him from the equation. Yeah, he did. Look, there is a bit of everything in this movie. If you're like, hey, I liked Prometheus. Is there anything from that? Yes, tick. <laughs> yes. Is there anything from that alien movie with the guy in the wheelchair? That one, whatever that one is. Yep, there's something from that. It's like that, isn't it, all the way Correct. along? And it went a bit too far when uh, Andy did the bitch talk. Yes. Because that didn't make any sense. No. It's just talking to the audience at that point. Which Correct. I, I, did, I didn't like that. I thought, what the fuck is that? Tacky. I mean, can't you just hold back on that? You don't need to do that. Correct. Yeah, it makes you feel tacky. So, yeah, there's something. I like this director because that is Evil Dead that he made, 2013. It's fantastic, that movie. It's so disgusting and gross. And unlike the, um, you know, it's not campy like the original Evil Deads. It's just like this gross out, disgusting, bloodthirsty Evil Dead. I like that. But I don't think he brought... I was thinking this was going to be more of a gore fest because of that. Because of his Evil Dead connection. Mm, I, thought, right. I thought he was probably going to bring like... We're really going over the top with the blood and gore. But we're not, are we? It's a lot of the cutting away from things on this. Somebody True. gets bit, and very quickly you don't see anything. True. So, yeah, it felt a bit sanitized in that way. I expected buckets of blood, but there isn't that. I mean, there's buckets of acid. <laughs> yes. Uh, IMDb reviews, what are those? Those are reviews on a little website called the Internet Movie Database, and you like to read the ones that are one star, because if you like the movie, then the one star seems just very, I don't know, uh, what's the word? Wrong. <laughs> and if you don't like the movie, you love to agree with them. So, All right. The first guy says, it wasn't scary, 
or particularly well written. The worst part of the movie was that about 10% was audible. And it wasn't a problem with the theatre I was in. Honestly, I don't know how they could have possibly released this movie. The actors all mumble their lines in weird accents. Agree. So we could only catch a handful of the lines, especially in the first 10 to 15 minutes. On the flip side, the soundtrack and special effects were so loud that everybody in the theatre had to put their hands over their ears. I mean, it has like loud rumbling explosion special effects, but I do think, I don't think it's like you can't hear the dialogue. I think it's the accents. And I was like, oh, these accents are really, really thick. Did they go like, let's audition the most thick accent people who nobody can understand because who cares? They're going to die. I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) But I do kind of agree with that. I was like, I'm struggling with this guy. Yes. I can't. I can't even fathom what you would be thinking of him. I couldn't understand him. Yeah. So I was just taking context. Yeah, bro. You're probably just like, oh, he's just... I mean, basically, he was just insulting the other guy, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he was just mad at the android. Yeah, that was all he does. That's his entire personality. Yeah. (laughs) And they were so so bad for him because the reason he's mad at the synth is that when his mother died, it was because a synth had made the decision to lock down a door that could have that some people could have escaped from a situation. Yes. But in order to save 12 other people, they lock the synth locked the door and then his mother was trapped inside. So the choice was by the synth to let three people die and save 12 people or let 15 people die. Well, yeah. he's mad at all synths, of course, with a bad attitude. It's a trope, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we've seen it before. And it wasn't even like a quality. He didn't even, what they needed to do is have him have a little change of heart. Right? So that we were like, okay, well, he's not a complete ass. But then I was happy when he didn't yeah. make it, which is not good. Second person says, um, the trailers for this film were so promising, I actually coughed up the 22 bucks to go and see it. 22 bucks? Is Wait. that how much it is to see it? Jeez. Let me tell you, once I got a, a pedicure in a dodgy salon, and I got a staph infection and needed antibiotics for a month, that was better than this oh movie. My God. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I I enjoy your enthusiasm there for writing your review. I love it. (laughs) I have only ever walked out of one movie, and it was Dracula Dead and Loving It with Leslie Nielsen. Was it like 1987? But that movie was Schindler's List compared to this botched movie. I can't even find the adjectives right now because I'm so angry. I'm liking this person. (laughs) The last person says... The first two movies in the Alien series are two of the best movies of all time. And the number three and number four movies, he obviously doesn't remember the names of any of these movies, (laughs) are also excellent movies. But The Covenant and The Prometheus are really, really bad. I could not finish them. Unfortunately, this one's the same way. I can't finish it. And the problem is the bad acting and accents. There's an android who is a really bad actor. And the cast is too young. They haven't had any time to develop their acting skills. The director can't take any good shots of the faces of the actors either. They all look ugly. (laughs) That's it. That's an interesting touch up there, a touch there. (laughs) So those are the people who didn't like the, uh, I was going to say the alien. Mm -hmm. The alien Romulus. Uh, Let's give uh, alien Romulus a score. We watched the streaming version. It does have some extras actually. That's some deleted scenes and some extras. Uh, I'm going to give Alien Romulus... Ooh, if I give it a 0.5, I would give it a 6.5, but I, I don't, so I'll give it a 6. <laughs> I mean, you can. There's not, like, an actual rule. Just a 6. All right, well, I will give it a 6.9, because I think as far as, like, Alien World, I'm happy with it, but I didn't love it. Yeah. See, we're in the same ballpark. I think it's quality. It's it is. Du- okay, but what we haven't discussed, and I'm going to say it now, is that the Bishop character looked like shit. Oh, we did not discuss that. We did not. I hated Ian it. Holm. I hated it. It was Ash, terrible. Ash, not Bishop. No, well, he was Rook. You're right. In this one, he's a... So remember Ash from Alien. Yeah, well, he makes a return in this movie in a weird way. But he, it's awful. He's Looks a synth, and he's called Rook, but it's... Ian Holmes' likeness and Ian Holm uh, voice coming out of it. Because Ian Holm is dead. Right. Sadly. So they've recreated him with a very, very bad. And it's yes. sticking in my mind now. And I want it to go away. I don't want the image like of that. A, it's like a 
cheap face replacement. Yes, it's yeah. really bad. And I'm just like, dude, what are you thinking? And that ruins it. And your suggestion was good. Rough up his face really bad, like he's all ripped and torn. and Because he was anyway. His yes, head was almost off. His, his top half was ripped off and yeah. he had alien acid all over his arms. And so just splash that on his face so where you're not having to look at a weird, rubbery... Oh, and I'm it's, trying not um, to be horrible about it, but it was not good. It's Peter Cushing in Rogue One levels yes. of bad. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how things like that get passed. I don't know, you know. Somebody's standard got too low. Even, like I say, even if you didn't have to show his face and you just heard his voice coming out of the computer, that would have been fine as well. Yes. Because the voice was actually good. I understood that it was Ian Holm listening to it. I mean, it wasn't. It was somebody doing an impression of him, but... That would have been better. Yeah. So sadly, that that if I'm lowering my score, I'll lower it to a that's six, why six point five. I really love Rogue One, but every time I see that sequence, which they could, because because they can't control themselves. <laughs> yes. In Rogue One, <laughs> the sequence starts where Peter Cushing's talking. The camera's behind him. The whole scene could have been the camera behind him, and I'd have been fine with it. Absolutely. But as soon as he turned around and it looked like he was from Star Wars Rebels, all of a sudden. You know, the animation. Yes. And then you were like, what the F is this? Like the rest, there's nothing else in this movie that looks like that. Just that. It's just like, control yourselves. Like in this movie. Control yourself. You don't need to say bitch. No. No, you don't need to do that. Like we, um, you know, for a second we go, (laughs) it doesn't add anything. Somebody's going to go, yeah. You know, they will. Somebody punches the ad on it. Yeah. I'm thinking... You know, because it introduced video games into the alien universe here. I was thinking somebody was going to shout Game Over Man. Oh, Game Over Man, yeah. Game Over Man. Yeah, and I thought that was going to happen as well, and I'm like, please don't do that. Please, please, please. Yeah. All right, so those are our scores. Next week, we're going, it's Halloween next week, I'm assuming. Is it? But it's very close. I don't even know the date anymore. No, it isn't. It's uh, two weeks still. Anyway. Oh, today's the 19th, yeah. We'll continue on the horror tip. Next week, we're looking at the movie The Substance, which I am hearing is very difficult to watch. Okay, right on. So we'll go for that one. Give me difficult. I can handle it. Yeah. Movie recommendations. I'm going with Kaylee Spaney from this movie. She was in the movie Civil War, which I really liked. Mm -hmm. And Evil Dead 2013. I have to recommend that one. It's excellent. You did really like it, but we have to give full disclosure here. You are a huge Evil Dead fan. Yes. And, and so I when, think he did justice to Evil Dead in his own way. Right. And so when you like it, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's easy to mess Evil Dead up, isn't it? As Just well. like it's easy to S up, S up Malian. S up Malian. <laughs> mess up Alien. <laughs> All right. What are yours? Mine are going back to the 21st or 20. This is 21st, 20th century. Just movies I've seen. There's no specific anything. It's not about the quality. It's not about the genre. Nothing at all. It's just that I've seen them. And so if you want to be just like me, then you want to watch them too. So we have Silkwood, very dramatic. Bugsy, dramatic, but also kind of of its time, you know? Bugsy is a very weird movie. It is. And then we have The Insider, which, of course, is another one of those dramatic, kind of like Silkwood, you know? You've got The Insider, kind of anti-corporate something-something, I think, isn't it? Or The Insider... Oh, no, that's the other one with the guy in the wall. <laughs> inside man. In the bank. Oh, no, you're right. That's inside man. The insider. I don't remember what it is, but I've seen it. I'll Man. tell you what the insider is. <laughs> Go right. for it. <laughs> it's, it's a movie with Al Pacino and Russell Crowe. Okay. A research chemist comes under personal and professional attack when he decides to appear in a 60 minutes expose on Big Tobacco. Okay, so there we go. Yes, now I recall. So same as Silkwood, because she's a whistleblower about a nuclear facility. Yeah, it was very good, actually. Yeah, and then we have Misery, also. Mm -hmm. That's a good, creepy story. Yes. If you haven't seen it, see it. And then we have Frankenstein, and I think that Frankenstein would have been, could have been any of them, either The the original from, like, the 30s. Could have been the one with Robert De Niro, I think, unless that one's called The Monster. I don't remember, but... There's a new one coming next year. Any Frankenstein, I'm happy to give it a go. Yeah, there's definitely a new Frankenstein coming up. I I keep seeing, like, adverts for it. Don't know what it is. I hope they do it well. Yeah. 
All right. So, a Scully stuff. I've been playing a little bit. I've been actually playing Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition. Sleeping Dogs is a game from like 2013. Okay. It's a. It was back in the day, like in the 360 era, when they made big budget open world games with like Hollywood stars in them. Okay. Like Emma Stone is in this. Oh. And there's all kinds of uh, Hollywood actors doing the voices for the people. It doesn't happen anymore. It was just a thing. I think somebody had convinced Hollywood that there's lots of money to be had being in games. <laughs> Everybody be in a game now. And now they've realized it's probably not as well paying as the movies. So yeah, this is a uh, Sleeping Dogs. It's a cool game. I've played it through already before. But it works perfectly because it's a game from 2013 and it's been remastered. And it's an open world game like GTA. It works perfectly on the Steam Deck, which Mm. is awesome because I can just sit and play it for a few minutes and the Steam Deck's an awesome machine. What I've liked about the Steam Deck since I got it is I've been able to go back and play older games that I missed. I didn't play them at the time for some reason. And just play them like as other new games and handheld format is really good for that so uh sleeping dogs it's <laughs> i had a look i'd already had it in my steam library but i was like how much does this cost now it's like really old it's an awesome game i would give it a nine out of ten it's so cool oh nice it costs two dollars and 49 cents on steam <laughs> right on <laughs> so you know what i mean there, there are gems out there that cost very little money that you can buy and play like old what it made me think of is it doesn't matter how old or new a game is. If it's a good game, play it, right? Absolutely. Even if it's from 30 or 60 years ago. Just like yeah. movies. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Sid Talk, what's for dinner? Well, you're making a lovely stew. It's a tomato and bean stew. Okay. Yes. I'm all in. And what's your advice? And let's get out of it. My advice is, let me look at it. Okay. And this is controversial and people will disagree because they'll try to apply it to some situation that is not what I'm applying it to, but whatever you do, whatever you're doing. I read recently, this is off topic, that if somebody says to you, you do you, that they, someone has decided that that means like, fuck you. Yes. It isn't. If I say to you, this is a whole other bit of advice. (laughs) If I look at you and we're discussing something and you and I don't agree and I say, you know what? You do you. Now, that doesn't mean fuck you. That means I get it. You're you're living a life that is not uh, we're not mixing our little particles together as one fucking human in this world. And you get to do your life. That means you do you. I may not <laughs> like it. If I want to say fuck you, that's what I'm going to say. I'm not one of these hidden agenda people. I will say exactly what I mean. So. If you saw that meme and then someone says you do you, do not be a dickhead and assume that they're being rude. They're just maybe like me and saying like, you know what? Good for you. You, you do you. So my actual thing today is in life, you you can't get it all wrong, right? You can fail in the world by being a horrible asshole. You can fail the humanity of us all by being destructive and terrible and disgusting and a leech yes you can fail at though making those decisions that harm people and things but let's subtract those assholes and be like in life if you're faced with a situation that's complex difficult none of us have a manual and you can claim that your religion has a book and it tells you what to do that's fine you do you do you (laughs) there we go i've looped it back that's not a manual on how to actually internally cope And then what decisions to make specifically all the time. My mother isn't well. She's on hospice. We've discussed it before. If this is your first time you're listening. Well, there you go. This is October of 2024. That's where we're at. And me observing all the different people in our lives and how everybody, everybody is obligated to themselves to cope and do what they've got to do their own way to cope with it, to deal with it, to face it, confront it, and move through it, and whatever you do to keep going, right? You're not going to get it wrong. You will not fail at coping with the loss of a person. You can't fail. Someone will make you feel that way because they don't like what you're doing. They wouldn't do what you're doing. Little snarky comments. Someone might try to make you feel guilty 
or make you think that what you're doing isn't in line with what they think is quote unquote moral or ethical or whatever for themselves, right? In this situation, you're not obligated to them. If you have a relationship with a person that, and there's a struggle or difficulty, or it's going to be a loss or has been a loss, that's the only, that's a two way street. That's the only thing that matters is between you and them. And if what you're doing works in the context of that relationship and for you to be able to get on with your days, that's a success, right? You're not failing. And people will try to make you feel like you're failing, even if you feel like they have good intentions and, oh, maybe they're right and I'm wrong. Well, dig deep. And if you come to a new conclusion, fair enough. But if you're really driven primally to make certain decisions and that's all you can cope with, That is not failing. That is all. (laughs) Well said. Thanks. Thanks. I like it. Um, So uh, let's play the music because I always forget. Okay. (laughs) Here's some nice music for you. You like it? I can only hear it. it. All right. AceGully.com. That's the place you can go to get this podcast. Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, and YouTube. We're available in all those places. You can go to social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm A. Scully, she's Sid Talk. Email feedback to me, A. Scully at A. Scully.com. Do not email Sid Talk anything ever. <laughs> and stay classy, the alien. Let's see. We're going to see more of the alien next year in Alien Earth. Right on. And I'm going to say think for yourself, because if you're not doing it, someone is really doing it for you. 